Well, hello, folks. Welcome to another uh, semi-technical video from New SLLC. That would be we. Today, we're going to look at signal speed versus rate for newbies. So, if you're a newbie and you are interested in this, because you want to go on into uh, more technical uh, learning, then uh, this could be of some significance to you because everybody uses this wrong, particularly the newbies, because they don't even know they're using it incorrectly. Um, this is video number 14 in the series, and we are definitely in telephonic transmission on this one. Uh, subject at hand, I'm going to tell the truth and shed a little light on uh, the difference between speed and rate. Uh, carrier signals, either digital or analog, get trashed up over distance. So coming out the end of the transmission facility, you have something that doesn't look a whole like what like what you started with over here. In particular, these analog signals right here, like if this were a voice frequency representing my voice right now that you're listening to, when it comes out over here out of the transmission facility, it could sound absolutely nothing like my voice, you know, all kinds of static and garbage and something like that. Um, so keep that in mind. If you want to know about uh, why that happens on wire systems, then uh, you can go back and uh, check with Eli the Iceman because he are right here. Yeah, does that to analog signals. That was in an earlier video, by the way. So if you don't know what Eli the Iceman is and you don't know what R is, you should probably go back. Um, keep this in mind. According to this dude over here, nothing moves faster than light. Um, as far as I know, we don't have a whole lot of systems in telecommunication that sends light through space. I, I think there are some infrared systems or something, maybe an experiment, but um, nothing in standard usage is uh, light through space for telecom. We do have radio through air, of course, and look at the uh, speed on this. Here's uh, the thing everybody knows. Light mo moves at approximately 186,000 miles per second. Since we don't ever do this, or at least as far as I know, we don't ever do this, uh, this is the fastest that the signal can ever travel from one place to another if you're using radio. And if you have a wideband on coaxial cable, it's still cranking along pretty quick. But the examples I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to move down to this. You say, what happened here? Light through glass. Look, it's 124. I thought it was 186. Nope. When you start pushing these little photons through a glass fiber, uh, they don't move up here like everybody says they do, but they're still cranking right along, so keep that in mind, 124,000. Some of these other things here we won't need to worry about too much because I want to kind of focus on this as uh, the example of the uh, difference between speed and rate. So, so if I'm using a fiber uh, pulse, and I'm pulsing the light on and off, say, um, a million bits per second, because that's where we're really talking about here is digital because they're either on or off so it's a binary thing right on or off so if I'm pulsing this light bulb right here this this uh, light source which is really more like this there's a laser in here and I connect a fiber optic uh, thing to it so if I look at the what's going on inside the fiber optic when I pulse this thing on and off this uh, step index fiber is pretty big that's a relative term um, so the the, uh, the modes or beams of light coming out of here can enter at different angles right here and what happens is those modes are beams and they aren't different colors by the way I just made them colored so you could see the difference is that because they're entering at different angles and the surface inside of the fiber is kind of like a mirror so what happens is this one comes straight out bang bong bounces off bong 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 like that so over here I've launched all of them at the same time but when they come out they're not getting here all at the same time and why is that it's because the speed of the photons now yeah, they're all moving at the same speed right here 124 but some of them bounce more times than others so they actually have to go further so what happens is they come out here all spread out so I had a nice clean on off over here but over here the poor little guy is trying to determine when he has enough photons to say it's on yeah and that is uh, not really really clear if he's pulsing this really really fast so what happens is uh, it's kind of blurry. Then guys say, well, maybe I got enough to say it's on like that. So this tends to be pulsed at a much lower rate. That is uh, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. The speed of the photons is the same, but some of them bounce further, so they take longer to get here. So it spreads out. It's called pulse spreading. So how do we get around that? Well, uh, let's say I'm pulsing this thing here to, you know, 
million bits per second. Now, what happens? Well, it's a little smaller and it's not reflective in here, it's more refractive, so the beams tend to get bent instead of bouncing like this, and so they tend to get here a little bit more cohesively, so I'm not quite so blurry out here determining when it's on or off, on or off. But are all of these traveling at the same velocity? Yes, they are. It's just some of them have to go a little further than the other ones, right? So the distance is a little more because you're bouncing, actually reflect, not reflecting, you're being um, bent, right? refracted a little more than the other ones. So how can I get around that uh, spreading, which happens here and here, is I can use a single mode and it's so small that just a single uh, mode of light or beam of light can be launched down through here. So when it's on and off and on and off, it's real clear what it, when it's on and off, on and off over here. So I, I'm really, really clean. But you can see right away that the, the, the speed of the, the photons is really important. And it doesn't have a whole lot to do uh, with how quickly I'm uh, f uh, flashing this light on and off, does it? I can flash the light on and off really fast down here and have nice clean pulses, but I flash the light on and off the same number of times and I get you know kind of blurry pulses over here, right? Meaning I can I can pulse this much higher bit rate than I can this, but the signal speed, right, representing those things, it's the same because it's a light beam. It's moving at 124. So I'll give you two examples here. This is the first one, this uh, first um, uh, picture right here. I'll give you another one in just a second. So if I go back to my T-type carrier system, which I've used several times before, um, I have a whole bunch of videos that go into this really, really deeply. So once you get past this little introduction part, maybe you want to go look at those. So my channel payload rate, a single channel, is 64 kilobits. Why is that? Because I have an 8-bit byte representing something right here that was originally 125, mi 125 microseconds long. But my rotation here is 125 microseconds. So I, I, I use up the entire rotation if I just had a single channel. So what I do is I squish this down in time. It doesn't change its information content. The bit pattern is still the same, on, off, 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 on, 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 like that. But now I've got a 5.2 microsecond uh, string or byte, 8 bits but it represents exactly the same thing I had up here. So I didn't change the information content, I just uh, shortened up the bit time intervals so that I could fit them into this 125 microsecond window and allow 23 other people to do the same. Right, so I got 5.2 microseconds for person one, 5.2 for me, 5.2 for number three, blah, 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 like that. So my channel pay, payload rate is 64 kilobit. But if I look at the entire system rotation payload, I've got 24 time slots or channels right, of 8 bits each. So I really, when I start going around here, 8 bits each, 8,000 times per second. So if I really start going around here, I'll find that I have 1.536 million bits per second here, right? Because I've got 24 64 kilobit capacities. So that brings me down to this to give you an idea. To transfer a 640,000 bit file at the channel level, 64 kilobits, it will take 80,000 of these uh, rotations, each one of which is 8 bits, right? Because I got 8 bits, so 8 bits. So rotations of the 125 microseconds, that is, it'll take 100 seconds to transfer this 640K file. But if I don't channelize this, I just use the entire 1536 for me, just for me, I can transfer that very same file at the system level, 1536, and it will take 3.33333K 192 bit rotations. Right, because there's 192 bits total here plus one overhead thing. So I've got 192 bits of possible payload right here of this uh, 125 microsecond rotation, which means that I'm only going to use 4.166 seconds to send that same file that took me 100 seconds up here. 
So what do we just learn from this? If I'm sending this out as digital pulses on a fiber system right here, the ones and zeros, the ones and zeros right here are light on and off, on and off, on and off. How fast are those on and off pulses moving down that fiber optic? They're moving at this speed, the velocity, right? But you can see that because the speed's the same, whether I'm using all of this for my transfer or just one of this for my transfer, the little individual bits right here are moving at the 124. But the rate is very different for the information transfer or the data transfer because it is using the single one here, I've got 64,000 bits per second. But using the entire thing, I've got 1536 megabits right, per second. So I didn't change the speed. I did change the rate. So what does that mean? It means that I transfer my information much faster right here by using very, you know, by using a whole bunch more bits. Uh, you okay with this? It's, it still may be a little bit confusing. Let's try this one. I know you think you understand what you thought I said, but I don't think you realize what you heard is not what I meant. Let's go back up to a fi uh, to a light through space because everybody's familiar with that, right? The one we just used, I was talking about, you know, fiber, which is 124, but let's go up to 186 as though we did send this over um, uh, light through space. So what I have then is a transmitter over here someplace and 186,000 miles away, I've got a receiver right here. And I've got a time interval that I'm looking at here of one byte. And the one byte takes up one second right here. So it's a one second window that I can stick eight bits into. So I've shown you one down here. Here's a an eight bit byte, eight pulses per second, right? Pulses are bits. So I've got an on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Now that represents something and we don't know what it is. Can frankly don't care. So I've got this uh, series of eight coming in here at eight pulses per second, right? Because it is one second long right here. So I've got eight pulses in one second. Now, how long did it take for this leading edge right here of this, this pulse, this light on? How long did it take to get from here over to here? Yeah, uh, uh, uh. Right here, 186,000 miles per second. So when I turned this on, it took one second to get that, that little light bulb over here. One second. Can I make it go any faster than this? Nope. Einstein says this is as fast as you will ever go. So I'm now moving at the highest speed that you can ever move. So it takes eight, it takes, uh, to get this eight bits, eight bits over here, it takes one second. Boink and they're over here. Now that's when the first one comes in, but the second one comes in an eighth of a second behind that, and then an eighth of a second behind that, eighth of a second behind that. But if I look at it as a group right here, I just got eight pulses per second, and they moved, the grouping of eight moved here at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second, so it took one second. Now what happens if I shorten these up in time? so that I have 16 pulses per second or bits per second within that window right here. How fast is this group moving? So when this one gets turned on over here, how long does it take to get over here? Yep, 186,000 miles per second. That's the speed of the byte, or in this case, two bytes. It's the speed of the bits themselves is 186,000 miles per second. Can I make them go any faster? No, Einstein says you cannot do that. So as I keep shortening these up in time, right, I put a gazillion bits within this one second. How fast is that group of a bazillion bits moving? 186,000. Yeah, but what did I do? I had more bits in the second, therefore I represented more information in that second, therefore I in increased the capacity of information transfer because I've shortened the individual pieces of the information down in time. So I've increased the rate, you can see it plain as day, but I haven't increased the speed, right? it still takes a second for all that stuff to get from here over to here. 
You okay with that? Now you say, you know, what difference does it make? Well, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference if you're not uh, trying to understand how the technology works. And you can just keep on doing what Cox Cable does all the time. We're going to increase your speed, and it only costs you 50 bucks more a month. Guess what? They, they're not increasing your speed. They're shortening up the bits so that they get more through in, a, in less time, so the picture on your computer comes up quicker, right? But that's not because the signal's faster. It's because the elements being sent are shorter in time. Yeah, I know. It's techy. Yeah, I know. Some people say, who cares? Well, you should if you're going to go on to more advanced courses. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, you really should go back and look at some of the earlier videos if this is still confusing for you. 10-4, Roger Rubber Ducky, over and out.